seen. But in fact, this loses. It's so queen takes h5. Queen takes h5, very good. Because now the difference is there's no f6. Well, there is, but it doesn't help. We just win the queen. And then after this, we go here. <clears throat> so another mistake students sometimes do is they sometimes see rook takes h5, is met by f6, and then they throw away rook takes h5 and they throw away the whole idea and they start looking at moves like g4 or f5 or rook g3. And um, which are not as forcing. They are still might be looking good, but they're not so forcing. And for example, g4 gives black a chance to play something like d4 and create some counterplay. So it's very important to not give up on the idea. So if rook h5 doesn't work, you have to check and see whether a move like queen h5 would work, right? So you spot opponent's defense, but the next step is not to give up on the idea and see if you can somehow still make something similar work. All right, now we're going to look at a more difficult example. Uh, and uh, this one is uh, black to play. So black to play and uh, I'll give you guys at least three minutes. Try to find <clears throat> what is black's best option here. Now this is this could be quite challenging, actually, because the most tempting move might not necessarily. Well, anyway, I'm not going to give any hints. Just uh, try to work on it. Black to play and find the best line. Queen h5. Queen h5, okay. So queen h5 is certainly a move that is the most tempting. And, and it looks completely decisive because we're, we're threatening queen h3, we're threatening queen h6. It looks like white should resign, right? It looks like... But, but why play is queen takes c5? Queen takes, queen c takes c4, I mean. Yes, so then what? Yeah, and then um, white check. And then um, if rook takes, then white checkmate too. Yes. So queen takes c4, actually, black can play d5. And black still is winning because he attacks the queen and he still has double threats. Mm. Queen takes c4 is important to see, right? You don't want to miss that. But you might think, okay, queen c4 doesn't, is not a problem because I can play d5. However, now let's do another exercise. Find the defense from the white standpoint of view. Find white's best defense. So we are trying to find a way to not lose a piece here, to save a piece. <clears throat> Uh, queen d7. Very good. Now we're threatening mate, we're defending h3, and we're threatening queen e6. A multi-purposeful move. Three ideas at the same time. And uh, when black takes, black's best move then is to take on g2. But then this kind of endgame will be very hard for black to win. Black is still better, but not winning. It's not a decisive advantage anymore. So therefore, queen h5, as tempting as it looks, is not actually winning. And this is challenging because you might think queen h5 is winning because what can opponent do? 
And even you might see queen takes c4 and you still win after d5. But the point here is that even when you see there's one idea, opponent can do queen c4 and you have a reply against it, let's say d5, you should not say, okay, that means the line works. You have to make sure that the line is good against every possible idea opponent might have, right? And in this case, he has queen d7, which actually defends the game. So if you can spot a top defensive move, queen d7, from your opponent, then you can figure out the best move. You have a better chance of figuring out the best move here. So now that we already know that queen d7 is the problem, what do you think black should play first? b5. Very good. b5, and this move disturbs white's harmony. So it makes white move the queen somewhere, and then we boom, go queen h5, and then we win the piece, and most likely we should win the game. So that is the idea, disturbing opponent's harmony, and that's something we will probably focus on in future lessons as well. But meanwhile, the important thing was to see the tactic, but then also spot opponent's reply, really consciously trying to look for the opponent's best potential replies, which is not easy, but it's something we have to try to train ourselves to do. All right, so now we're going to take a look at uh, another example, and this time from the white standpoint of view. And in this game, we had some Buev playing white against Wei Yi. So this was actually a very big upset that some Buev caused in the World Cup, at least in the uh, first game. And the white had a very interesting uh, strategy. He sacked a pawn for some initiative. It was a very sharp game. And then eventually they reach this position. And white to play and uh, find the best idea. So once again. Um, oh no. No, I want you to think no. for like three, five minutes if possible, because uh, this is uh, if you play the first move you see you're you're likely going to make a mistake. So I want you guys to, to try to think. And plus, we want to give everyone a chance to try to solve it too, right? Because it's a group class. So I'll give you about three minutes and then we will talk about it. <clears throat> Rook take d6. Well, that was not three minutes, so I'll uh, I'll keep letting other people uh, take some time and think. So. So instead of looking at the phone, I would prefer you to look at the position more and see if you're missing, not missing anything from your opponents. Because uh, in the real game, imagine you have a 